Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today I'm going to do a little video about a specific cassette manufacturer. And today's manufacturer is going to be... Da, 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 Memorex. Now, why did I go... Da, 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 because out of all the tape brands out there, barring the obvious garbage type zero brands, Memorex is a brand that either one of two things normally happen when people talk about them. People reference this type of cassette, and this is from the 70s, and say, this tape, when I had it, it shed all over my heads, it hasn't lasted long, and the felt pad disintegrated. Or, the other thing that people usually say about Memorex is they reference this type, and they say, oh yeah, it's the clown cassette. I used to use loads of them in my boombox. The girls used to like them for mixtapes. Neither of which is exactly a glowing recommendation of Memorex tapes. But you know what? What they say about these two tapes is actually spot on. I mean, this one, for example. If I can show you, this is a new old stock one, but if you look at that felt pad there, it's not the usual. If we look at this one, see this one you can see it's got like a, a metallic strip which springs with a bit of felt pad on and this makes the tape head contact the tape you know the tape head goes into that pushes the tape and it rubs against that however in this one there's no metal springy pad there it's just literally a bit of foam now this one hasn't disintegrated so it shows that this one has been say you know stored in good conditions all these years because this tape's about 40 years old but the tape itself even though new old stock is not usable it's got no left channel on it. It has degraded. This one, still perfectly usable, but I'll go into this more in a later video. I can tell by the shell here, by the stripes where the sticker is, that this is actually a Seihan of Korea rebrand. But basically, these two reactions are what normally happens when people ask about Memorex tapes. They had them in the 70s, they were rubbish, the pads disintegrated and tape shed, or they were just a nice little jokey tape that was cheap and available when they were younger to use in their boom boxes. And that's it. But that's a bit unfair. Because in reality, Memorex had some very good tapes. And they're not well respected really, you know. They're not talked about in the same leagues as TDK and Maxell and Sony and that's. They're sort of like the mm, cheaper, not really well respected tapes. But that's a good thing because I'm going to show you a couple today that I think are bargains. They're out there, they're good tapes, and I'll explain to you why they're good tapes, why they're worth picking up, and we'll also have a little listen so you can hear for yourself how good they are. So let's move that behind us forever, and let's go on to the first tape that I'm going to show you. It's this one. Now this is a fairly common Memorex. These can be had at very reasonable prices, and this is the DBS. Now, this is basically Memorex's entry level type 1 ferric from around 1987. The big difference with this is, is that this was not made by Memorex. Memorex stopped making tapes towards the mid to late 80s. This cassette comes from SKC in Korea, and SKC made very good cassettes, but at this time, Memorex's name was already blighted. People thought that they were over-marketed, and they did have a lot of marketing, over-stylized and over-priced compared to what you could get from TDK or Maxell. But this, however, I remember being sold very regularly, multi-packs here in the UK. This cassette is a good ferric. It's as good as a D, it's as good as a HF, it's as good as a UR. But these go for less money. You look for an 87 vintage D, you are in HF, you're going to maybe pay two to three pounds for them. These can regularly be got for less, but to my ears, they're just as good. And look, you see, look, it's got a proper metal-based pad in there. So the, you know, the, the actual, just a bit of foam like the early one's gone, you've got proper head contact because the spring pad is there. So that's one which I really recommend. But this next one is a real, real surprise. Now, 
Why do people ignore this particular cassette? I'll tell you, it's this. It's got a CD on it, and it's got CD there. And in the grand scheme of things with cassettes, vintage is good, analog is good. These have got CD written on them, ergo they're towards the end of the life of the cassette, ergo they're cheap, ergo they're not worth bothering with. But this cassette is very, very surprising. And let me show you why. In fact, let's just find the end. Oh, I can't, you can't beat opening of up, you know, first time getting that smell. And this tape certainly, certainly has a smell about it. Now, look how nice this cassette is to begin with. Oh, the box has been broken in transit, damn it. Never mind. That's what you get when you old stock. But look at that shell. Isn't that a nice attractive looking shell? It's different. It's not all clear. It's opaque. It's got a nice big window in it. Very nice looking tape. But back to the smell. If you take a sniff of this, you're going to smell the distinct waxy crayony smell of a pure chrome. You're not expecting that out of a tape which comes from 1997. Yeah, 1997. This is a, this is, well, I wouldn't say it's a pure chrome because the way it performs, and we'll see later, says to me this is actually a cobalt enhanced chrome. But the smell leads me to believe that there is indeed a chrome pigment in here. Now, this again is an SKC cassette. So it comes from Korea, but again, it's SKC made. And it's very good. It's very attractive. And when I do some recording, I won't lie to you when I say I would put this in the same class as a TDKSA. Yeah, and it's a Memorex. And although this is an American-only cassette, I've never seen them for sale outside of America. If you're in America and you want some superb-sounding Type 2s, don't dismiss this just because of the name and don't dismiss it because it has this tacky wrapper with CD written on it. This is a series cassette, as I'm now going to demonstrate. Okay, so the deck I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use my Iowa ADS950 again, simply because I want to explore what I've been saying about this tape, saying it's an overlooked tape and the formulation is kind of special on it because I think it's a cobalt-doped chrome. Now, why do I think that? Well, let me show you visually, and I'll do it with this deck. If we look here, the bias and record sensitivity dead center, this deck has been calibrated for the 1988 UX. But I'm gonna compare with some more popular tapes. So if we take the 1990 SA, which is one of my go-to tapes, and we do some calibration on it. If we look, compared to the UX, this does need to have the bias added. It needs bias, so I'm going to add some bias to it. And if I add some bias to it, we can see it's 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 round about right there. So the SA compared to that UX needs some positive bias. Now, if you've seen the video on pure chromes, you're going to probably be wondering, okay, so a pure chrome in this compared to the UX is going to be low on level and low on bias. So if I reset these down again to where they are with the UX, let's put a Chrome Maxima in and let's see how these bias. So again, we're down on level. So if I add level to it, We're about there, so we've added level, haven't needed to add bias. But we've added, like I say, a fair bit of level. And that's how the Chrome Maxima performs. So, actually, that's not quite right. Let's just add a bit more level. It's a bit wavering. There we go. We've added plenty of level there to get the Chrome Maxima right. So, what are we going to expect with this Memorex? Well, if it's a pure Chrome, we're going to expect it needs level. And chances are it might also need a little bit of negative bias. And it would help if I used the record function. Now if we look at this now compared to the Chrome Maxima, which are the settings that are at this, 
is over leveled. This does not need as much level as a Chrome Maxima. In fact, if I need to turn the level down, and if I turn the level down, the level here is virtually the same as the SA and the UX. In fact, if I put it Bob on center, this is what we've got. It's virtually the same as the SA and the UX. And if we keep looking at it, it just needs a tad smidge of positive bias. So a bit of positive bias and it's sort of there. So the big difference in look how much level the Memorex needs compared to what the Chrome Maxima needed. That says to me that this is cobalt doped because a pure Chrome would need a lot more level. Whereas this Memorex doesn't need that much level. Hmm, interesting. And then like I say, the fact I think it's a Chrome is because it smells like a Chrome. Simple as that. So now let's do some recording on this cassette and see what it actually sounds like. Okay, so. I've got the Memorex. I've biased it up, but let's just double check the old bias. There we go, it's nicely biased. And as we can see, we've just got a little bit of level and a little bit of positive bias, but it's pretty much spot on. So I'm gonna run this at four and a half because I always do usually for a level playing field, but let's, let's crank this up because again, even though this smells like a chrome, I'm gonna push this tape a bit because like I said in my chrome video, pure chromes you wanna keep around about zero dB. You don't wanna push them hard because they'll distort. But this one you'll see doesn't. But listen to how good this sounds. I think you've got to admit that if your eyes were closed and someone told you this was an SA or even an SAX, I think it'd be hard pushed to say with any degree of absolute certainty that it wasn't. And now just for fun, let's try a lowly DBS entry level ferric. Spice it up. Okay, needs some level, and of course needs some negative, but not that much. I mean, if we look at the calibration point on this, compared to UX Type 2, it needs level, sure, but it doesn't actually need any bias tweaks. It's Bob in the middle. Right, let's record some music on this. Keep it at 5, where we left the uh, 
CD2 app. Let's see what this sounds like. You can hear the hiss already, but it's a ferric. OBS on. Let's switch to the OBS on. Let's drop it down a bit. Put the OBS on. Sounds pretty good. A bit hot for a Dolby recording. Let's drop it down a bit. Sauce. Pretty good with the old Dolby. That's not that I use Dolby a lot, but it sounds good. Let's turn the Dolby off now. Good cassette. I like this. Dance music. Yeah, that's where I record these. Well worth it. So what have we concluded here? We've concluded the old adage, don't judge a book by its cover. Or rather, don't judge a tape brand by their 70s misdemeanours. I mean, okay, this was probably a decent tape in the day. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I didn't use it. But all I know is that right now, they're no good. Yeah, you don't want them. But don't let that put you off Memorex. Like I say, a lot of nostalgia in these for a lot of people. They're still perfectly fine for recording on. Use it in your boombox, use it in your Walkman. The nostalgia's there. They're not spectacular, but they're fine. However, this one, I hope you heard there, this is a little bit special. And especially if you're in America, these are relatively easy to find and they are relatively cheap. I mean, compared to what I think they sound like, I, I like I say, I think they sound as good as an SA and XL2, maybe even an SAX. If you compare what these go for compared to what people want for SAXs, these are a real bargain. And I want to add that as well, that if you're in Europe, as far as I can tell, this CRX2 has the same tape in it. This is another Cobalt Dope Chrome, but only this has got the 1987 shell because it comes from 1987, and this comes from 1997. Ten years difference between the two, but equally good tapes. And for the lowly little DBS, perfectly musical, lovely, nice brown tape. I think this is a very good tape, you heard it there. And for what they cost, if you want something that is vintage, because these really do have vintage kits, kitsch, I should say, looks to them, with the simple paper label, but the shell's good. These are really worth buying for the low price that they come for. So thanks for watching. And as always, if you're interested in any of these cassettes, do visit cassettecomeback.com where I have all these in stock at great prices. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.